Hey everyone, well, I picked this up off of eBay. It was something that I've never seen before and I have no idea how rare it is, but I just thought I would share with you because I haven't opened it up yet. And we'll, we'll open it up together so we can take a look inside. All right, so here we go. Hopefully I picked up the right envelope. So as you can see here, somebody was actually selling an AEG Industrial Power Tools catalog. And it's not just one catalog, there's actually a couple of them in here. So what I actually think these are Let's see if there's any names on there. Yeah, so it's it's totally blank there. So that means it wasn't mailed to anybody. But I think these actually are dealer catalogs. Um, back in the 70s, I don't think they made print catalogs, things that would be distributed to customers. They would send these out to you know dealers, small shops, and then the small shops would put in a order, you know, directly through AEG. So I think that I've never seen one of these before, so it could be that these are pretty common. Um, but I've definitely never seen one, especially not a North American yeah, Long Island. Wow. So what we got here is the industrial catalog. And then we got a couple of really tiny catalogs here, but this is the, the cutoff saw, which I've never actually seen an AEG cutoff saw before. And what it, what it looks like is just a grinder with a gigantic, <laughs> you know, wheel on it. So we got, they have a 14 inch and a 12 inch. If anybody's ever actually seen one of those before, it'd be interesting. Because it could be that these were made to order and they didn't sell very many of them. So let's take a look here. We got uh, 2300 watts, 18 amps, wow. 4,350 RPM, uh, 14-inch wheel, arbor, 1-inch weight, excluding case, 27 and 3 quarter pounds. Wow. So that's the weight of the tool. That's a heck of a tool. And then the 12-inch looks like it's almost exactly the same specs. Um, the only difference really is just the weight. I bet you it just has a different gearbox in there. But wow, the, the condition of these is pretty amazing for them being over, um, you know, 40 years old. So yeah, this is definitely not something that most homeowners would buy. One of these cutoff saws this is definitely for industrial work. And it looks like they're advertising it more as a uh, plumbing you know, for plumbing work. So if there's interest in um, seeing these scanned, you know, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to scanning these in and putting them on the uh, German Tool Reviews website if, if you guys are interested in seeing them. Uh, I definitely want to want more people to see these than, uh, you know, and that's another thing on these AEG. I've had a lot of trouble locating manuals for the older AEG stuff before they were uh, bought out by Atlas Copco. So there seems to be a big black hole in terms of uh, the documentation for those tools. So if anybody has any ideas about where to where to find that documentation, I know that you can go to some of the AEG websites and find a lot of their 220 volt tools, but in terms of the North American stuff, I've found basically nothing. I mean, you search for some of these models. You search for the BH25, and you're not going to find anything in terms of documentation. So this actually is pretty cool. It's the uh, it's a it's a little tiny flyer for rotary hammers, and you'll probably recognize one of these, the BH25. So this is the BH25 Super, which is a slightly different model. I've seen people selling some of these. So I don't know what the difference between the super version 
and the version I have is. So it'd be interesting to see the insides there, but in terms of the outside, it looks exactly the same as the regular BH25. So it looks like there's a couple other models. I've never, never even heard of the BH12 before. I think I've seen a BH16 before advertised, but it looks like these are just kind of smaller models of the, uh, the main BH25. But even this flyer, I've never seen this flyer before. So I'm guessing somebody was cleaning out their basement or or something and they found these and they said, oh, well, maybe somebody will want to buy these and yeah, I want to buy them. All right, so now we move on to the the 1974 catalog. So let's take a look here. So look at where well, they sure didn't like uh, offering warranties back then. Six month warranty. But I'm guessing that they didn't have very many problems with people returning these because they were so well built. Now, like up here, it says uh, radio and TV interference suppressing. Let your neighbors enjoy his TV show while you are working with your AEG machine. So I guess that's what that little filter is supposed to do, <laughs> that little suppression uh, capacitor. Double insulation. Tested several times with 4,000 volt. Give you maximum safety. High heat resistant armature, drop force percussion. Armature insulation made of duroplast ensures the formability even under high temperatures. Self disconnecting carbon brushes, so they even had those back then. Welded commutators, elliptical gears, sealed ball bearings, it, just some of the features. So first thing we got up here is uh, electric drills. I've never actually seen, I think, so this one's kind of interesting, it's a right angle drill. So it looks like, yeah, we got a 250 watt, looks like these are basically the same, one's just a right angle. And then down here we have the B8A at 4 amps, and then we got the B2420 at 4 amps. So it looks like this one uh, is a little bit more powerful. This one has an extra gear, it looks like. This one only has a single speed. All right, now let's see what we got here on the next page. We got more electric drills. So we got the uh, 500 watt B13R, B132. Two speed, and then we got a B16, and then another B16, and this is the four speed model. So then we got AEG bench grinder, and that's another one I've never seen before. I think maybe I've I've have seen these this one on eBay, the Deutschland or eBay.de German eBay version. Uh, but I've never seen any 110 volt bench grinder. And this drill, this drill stand I've seen before. So that's actually an AEG product. And I've actually seen a lot of people selling these with some other type of drill in, on installed on there. Let's see what else we got. And angle grinders. Yeah, and the AEG angle grinders, they pop up occasionally, but they're for the most part pretty rare. So we got a uh, we got three, 330 watt, 700 watt, 900 watt, six inch. So these are two or four and a half. And then we got a 1700 watt, seven inch, 1700 watt, nine inch. And then we got a, this is 2000 watt, seven inch, and a 2000 watt, nine inch. 
Then on the next page we got die grinder, polisher, and a sander. And then a couple of accessories here. Just your standard uh, grinding accessories. And I guess this cutting stand is a uh, Cutting stand is actually different than the other cutting stand. It's got a different part number. I'm not sure what the difference would be. And then what we got on here is the abrasives that you can order. And I got part numbers for all of those. And now onto the rotary hammers. So we already saw a little short brochure on that with the BH12, BH16, and BH25 Super. So it looks like um, the difference probably is one of the problems with the BH25 normal one is that you it's only you can only put it in rotary mode. You can't put it in hammer only mode. And it looks like they this one right here has hammering. So there must be like a little switch somewhere. And that's probably the only difference between the two. All right. And then we got some uh, rotary hammer accessories. And then some more hammer drills. These are some of the lighter weight ones. So we got the SB2 400. So that's um, that's one that I actually rebuilt, and I couldn't find any documentation on it. Because remember, it had this really weird uh, switching mechanism, where it was like a bolt that was actually connected to the gear compartment directly. So at least with that kind of dates that drill to probably the 70s or around there. So we got a little bit of mold in there, but that's to be expected for a document this old. And we got some uh, a couple more hammer drills over here. The SBZ, the SB4500. Boy, that thing is a beast, 10 pounds. For a drill, that's pretty heavy. So check out these accessories down here. Now, I've never seen this before. This is, I wonder how many of these they actually sold. A ceiling drill press. So I'm trying to think of what some of the applications would be for this. You know, uh, I guess they thought maybe if somebody was installing something overhead they needed to drill some holes in. But I have the feeling they probably didn't sell very many of these. And then the carrying cases. And then here's the the, t the uh, hammer drill bits. You got core cutters and and uh, various lengths. So we go screwdrivers. So I've been looking at a couple of these. Um, if you look, you can find actually new old stock versions of these drywall screwdrivers. Uh, so I guess they weren't very common. And people never bought them and never used them. But uh, yeah, it looks like these are mostly These two right here are, are meant for drywall. This one is for self-tapping fasteners. And wow, look at this, a tapper. So I've never seen that one. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like the uh, fine one we did. It's automatically reversing high capacity model on steel and aluminum. So what's the capacity? Three eighths uh, in steel, one half inch in aluminum. So nibblers. So this is one of the tools that's on my list to get. Is the uh, KN 1.25 or KN 1.5? They're basically the same, just the capacity is a little bit different. So nibblers, yeah, nibblers kind of like the shears, except it takes little tiny pieces of chunks out of the metal. It just kind of bites it off. And then this one I've never seen before, the 2.5A. So that one will do up to 14 gauge steel. So I pretty much have a very similar model 
I don't think it's exactly the same as this one. I think the one I have is a little bit newer than this catalog. I think it's from the 80s. So the shears, and the, again, these two I've never seen before. Never seen these models. And then jigsaws. This isn't so. Other than the drills, I see a lot of jigsaws come up, but I've never really. Uh, part of the thing is the, that the jigsaws, they're, if you find them, they're in one of two states. They're either in mint condition, and I really don't like buying, you know, tools in mint condition because I, I want to take it apart, and it's got to kind of feel bad about taking apart something that's barely been used. Um, or you find them and they're in, you know, totally destroyed condition, and they're almost to the point where you probably can't save it. And then a sander. I have seen this one before. And it looks like the last page here. We got the uh, abrasive cutoff, and we saw a flyer for that one. Yeah, it looks like it's a brand new. Yeah, let's offer it on April Fools, why don't we? Uh, who's the marketing guy who thought of that? But I've never seen these before. Chainsaw. And then the hedge trimmer that kind of looks like this like a sander kind of which is a hedge trimmer on it but again lots of stuff I've never even so here's the authorized service stations if anybody wants to pause the video and and look any of these guys up electric power tools incorporated I think I actually know where I know where Wheeler Avenue is but I've never heard of that company so they're probably not around anymore <laughs> I don't really recognize almost any of these. So these are all probably small, you know, little tool shops. And they, these are the kind of shops that this catalog would have gone to. Um, so that's why I think it's rare because uh, there wasn't that many distributors of AEG tools back in the 70s. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just thought I would share that with you. And if, if there is interest, I do have a scanner. I can scan this. And try to get it up on the website. I don't think that there's any any laws about re reprinting this or reproducing it, um, especially since they're the the heart of this company is not around anymore. I know the name is still around, but the uh, they really the AEG Power Tour Corporation is not really around anymore. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I'll catch you guys next time.